You've studied for your AWS certification exam for months. You've gone to the testing center, you've been in there for a couple of hours, and you're finally making your way to the end. You're about to submit your last question that you're about to answer, but before you do, you have this, this hollowness on the inside. You got a bad gut feeling because you don't think you've done enough to clear that exam. You go ahead and you hit the submit on your final results, and then you walk out of the testing center. You wait patiently for your results. Minutes seem like hours. Finally, you notice that you receive an email with your results. Your heart is pounding. You go into your email, you open it up, you click on it, and you look down there where it says results. You're looking for that pass. Unfortunately, you look down at those results and it's a fail. In this video, we're gonna focus on what happens when you fail an AWS certification exam. And where I wanna focus the most is bouncing back. It's my hope that this video will serve as your survival guide to failing an AWS certification exam. Whether you've already failed one or you may have a concern that you may fail one in the future, this is a video you can reference to get through it. Now, if you're new here, I'm Greg, creator of Thoughtful Techie Cloud, and each week I create a video that helps you easily navigate your AWS cloud and tech journey. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe right now. Failing an AWS certification exam is a topic many fear, but not many talk about. The first thing I wanna get right out of the way is I don't want you to worry because failing an AWS certification exam, contrary to what you might think right now, it's not the end of the world. Now in the immediate aftermath of you failing this AWS certification exam, you're gonna receive a notification that you didn't pass. This means there's not gonna be a certificate, nor is there gonna be a badge awarded. Now in regards to getting your results, whether you passed or failed, that's gonna be posted to your AWS certification account within five business days. Now if there's a delay beyond the five days, it could be because of some security review or technical reason that could be slowing things down. But typically it's within five business days. You'll get an email and you'll also be able to access your exam score from the exam history tab in your AWS certification account. Now there's gonna be a tremendous amount of shock. You may feel numb, overwhelmed. You may just not know what to do with yourself when you get that failed report. But let me tell you, everybody has failed an AWS certification exam I failed an AWS certification exam. These things are not easy. They're for a limited amount of time when you these exams, and there's a lot of pressure within that time frame to be able to just crunch through all the information, sift through all the uh, answer choices, and to be able to pick the right answer. Sometimes even if you studied well, you know what, you just have some bad luck. Maybe you only failed it by one or two. The goal here is to not beat yourself up to not play this narrative in your mind that's making it out worse than what it is. I want you to not look at this as a, a failure, but look at this as a feedback that you can incorporate. Now, I wanted to point out some interesting things here about the scoring that might not be obvious to you. And uh, passing scores, this, I'm gonna break this out based on foundational, associate, and professional exams. The passing score for the foundational exams, like a cloud practitioner, for example, is a 700 or higher. For an associate exam, like a solution architect associate or developer associate, for example, the scaled score is 720. And then for the specialty exams and professional exams, you would need a 750 or higher. Now, it's very important that you take a look at that score report because it's gonna break it down based on domains and where you were strong at and where you were weak at. Obviously, those domains that you were weak at, make sure you take a note of that and in your bounce back plan, you're gonna focus on those areas a lot more than you did the first time going into this exam. Now you might be wondering, how are those exam scores determined? There's a technique called ANGOFF, A-N-G-O-F-F. And what that essentially means is, somebody a lot smarter than me determines the level of difficulty per the questions. So let's say for example, two people get seven correct answers out of 10, the weight of that might be different because this is a scaled score. So if that seems complicated, don't worry about it. I'll put a link in the description below that goes into more depth about what scale score means. But for your purposes, 
Just remember, if you're taking a foundation, you need a 700 and above. If you're taking an associate, you need 720 and above. And if you're taking a specialty or a professional cert, you need a scaled score of 750 and above. Now let's talk about that retake policy. After you get that failed score, you have to wait 14 days before you can retake that exam. Now at first, you might be saying to yourself, well, gee whiz, I, I really don't wanna wait that 14 days. But keep in mind now, you just failed an exam that's an emotional event. You're gonna need some time to like clear your head as well as revisit studying to make sure that when you go in again, that you can pass it. So there's that 14 day period. I think it's a beneficial thing and you should definitely maximize that time before you take that next retake. You do have to pay that full exam fee again for every attempt. There's no limit on the total number of retakes, but I'm hoping that, you know, if you failed it once, you're gonna get it the second time. And it doesn't take you eight, nine, 10 times to retake it, but uh, you know, cause there's that full exam fee every time you go to register for it. Now fast forward, when you finally do pass the exam, you can't retake that exact exam for another two years. I don't know why you'd wanna do that, but uh, in case you did, you can't. Here's the exception to that though. If the exam is updated with a new code and a new guide, you can sit for that exam again because it's essentially a new version. So here's your next step action plan. I want you to take a look at your score report and review it thoroughly. Specifically, I want you to identify the areas that you didn't do so well in. And the third thing I want you to do is go to AWS Skill Builder and look at associated training modules that align very nicely to help you beef up in the areas that you didn't do so well on as indicated by your score report. And I wanna leave you with this. I know failing an AWS certification exam is not ideal, but guess what? You've gained the experience of taking this thing one time, so now you can take that experience and apply it to your bounce back plan so that on your future attempt, you can come out a lot better. Have you ever failed an AWS certification exam? Share your tips of how you bounce back in the comments below. And before you go, check out this video right here. And I'll see you in the next video.